Hello viewers and welcome to today's session on learning Verilog through examples and we are going to be discussing dual clock FIFOs today. So with that let's dive in. We want to look at dual clock FIFO and how it converts data from one clock domain to another. We want to also look at how full and empty signals are generated which is probably the most complex part of the dual clock FIFOs. Convert pointers safely from one domain to another also related to full and empty because the pointers are used to generate full and empty signals. Help how to use the reset safely in the context of multiple clocks and the FIFOs are obviously designed with any length of data any depth of memory and the code will be provided in the reference so that you do not have to write anything down so with that let's just quickly look at what this module will look like in a synchronizing FIFO or a dual clock FIFO there is two sections there is a write domain and there is a read domain and it Typically, a full signal will be generated from the write domain and an empty signal will be generated from the read domain. And the pointers, there's two pointers. There's write pointer that's used to write to the memory and there's a read pointer that's in the read domain that's used to read from memory. So the write pointer is synchronized by converting to gray first and then double flopping and passing to the read domain to generate the empty. And on the reverse side, the read pointer is converted to gray and then converted or synchronized uh, by clock, clock transfer and then converted back to write domain to generate the full signal. So that's the basics of or at a high level the view of what the synchronizing dual clock FIFO looks like. With that let's dive into the code. So here I have this code module that has a test bench on top as usual in which we have instantiated a dual clock FIFO and we have generated an async reset and we have write and read domains to the FIFO. We have the data input and, and queue. We have the write and read signals and the full and empty uh, flag here. And as usual, we generate the, the reset signals and the clocks. Now the read clock is a little bit slower than the write clock. And with that, we have a bunch of data. In fact, this is eight deep FIFO and we write it um, seven times because we cannot write to the eighth location as the design does not allow that. And on the read side, we can read all the seven locations and it should go empty. And we also keep a VCD file, which we will run using Icarus Verilog and GTK Wave, and we'll be able to look at that. Next, we look at the DC FIFO module itself. There is an async reset. And in our design, we synchronize the async reset to the write domain so that when you come out of reset, you have clock recovery timing, etc., which will be met because you have synchronized um, that to the right domain and so the analysis of timing becomes a little bit easier when you do that but in a sense you have right clock data in write, read clock read and queue empty and full so most of the typical law and we synchronize the resets on top but most of the logic um, in this module will look very similar to the uh, synchronous FIFO which was a single clock FIFO SC FIFO first of all uh, whenever the write happens we increment the write pointer by one and you can see there's an async reset but this is now a clock uh, which is the right clock and you'll also see a read clock now we'll ignore the right pointer conversion for now and uh, essentially we'll skip over all this and I'll describe that in a second but what happens is that the data that's coming in is at the right pointer is written into the memory and uh, the same thing happens on the read side that whatever the read pointer currently is pointing to that data is read out um, on the queue bus from the memory and it is sent out on queue. Now having said that the most important part like I said earlier is the generation of the full and empty signals. So what happens is the right pointer that's generated in the right clock domain, it's converted to the gray uh, value and here's the mechanism of converting uh, the pointer to its gray equivalent gray value and then once this pointer has been converted as WPTR gray, what we do is that we will take this across on the read clock and double flop it and we, when we double flop it we get this new pointer WPTR read and this is the pointer that's gray on the read side and to generate the empty all we have to do is compare read pointer gray which is a which is read pointer on the read side converted just simply to gray 
using this equation. And we compare read pointer gray to write pointer read, which is a gray pointer uh, converted to the read domain. So now when these two pointers become equal, you get an empty. Now keep in mind, I've skipped over this a little bit faster, but keep in mind that both these pointers are gray uh, counters. And therefore, um, this comparison is valid. Please do not compare a binary counter with a gray counter, in which case you will get um, false results and it would not work. So in a sense, the empty signal is generated um, as soon as these pointers become equal. Now keep in mind the right pointer, even though it's incremented on the right domain, it, it may take a two clock cycles or so to reach the read side. Uh, and that's when you would start to see that the FIFO is not empty. If a write happens, let's say very in the very beginning, it may take two or three clock cycles for that write to show up on the read side. And that's where FIFO will start showing not empty. And that's where you will start to read. Now, keep that in mind that that's why the reset is much more critical on the right side because as you come out of the reset a write may be happening right at the beginning whereas a read cannot be happening at the beginning because it takes a few clock cycles for the uh, pointers to show through on the read side which is where you will see that the empty is not there and you'll start to do some action on that side now going backwards a similar thing happens the read pointer is being incremented on uh, the read domain and this read pointer um, obviously is converted to a gray pointer and then it is clogged in the right domain. So you take this read pointer gray and convert this into this uh, read pointer gray in the right domain. And once you have that, we convert that back into the read pointer right in binary. And here's the equation for that. Once you get this read pointer back to binary, the comparison that's remaining is that Whenever the right pointer plus one equals this three pointer, um, which we call the right pointer next, whenever the next value that we are going to write is the read pointer, then we stop and we say we are full. Now this really means that we are not writing to one final location. So if you have eight locations, you can only write to seven locations. Once you once the pointer, once you write the seventh location, this equation starts to be valid which means that you will not be able to write to that last eighth location in this eight location FIFO. Or if you have 16 location FIFO, you can only write 15. Or you have width of, you know, n bits, then two to the power n uh, minus one is the total locations that you can write. So having said that, once this equals uh, WPTR next equals the read pointer binary value, which is metastable synchronized read pointer, then we are full and we cannot write and we should not write anymore. We are not checking for or protecting against full and empty signals in this FIFO, but that's possible too. If you gate your writes with this full or with the empty and prevent a write to happen to the memory, then you are adding protection circuit to the FIFO. So having said that, um, I just want to show that at the beginning in our test bench, um, we have seven writes happening. In fact, I had an eighth write in here, but then I realized that the FIFO was getting full and therefore I had to remove that. And then on the read side, the same thing happens. I have seven reads and when the eighth read happens, the FIFO has actually gone empty and that would lead to four faulty results. So I commented that out. Now with this, and obviously the way we have done it, we have saved all the results into a VCD file and you can do that. So now let's um, look into the um, the Icarus Verilog uh, compilation of this module. And then all you have to do is it out and then you have run the simulation and then simply run GTK wave here. Um, and once GTK wave loads, uh, we can essentially load our uh, save file and the save file basically shows us the results. And you can see in this that as soon as we come out of this asynchronous reset, there's seven writes uh, that happen here. And as soon as the seven, seventh write happens, the full is set. So if you just zoom into there, you can see that as soon as that seventh write happened, the full came on because it's an async signal. As soon as that happened, we became full 
and as soon as the first read happens, uh, it takes a little bit clock cycles after the first read for the full to go away. So the read pointer takes some time to cross over and that's why it's a little bit delayed. The FIFO is always a bit conservative and it protects you even more because it takes a little bit, little bit of time to cross the pointers on to the other side. Now, once you have read all the seven entries, remember that once we have read all the seven, the empty must go and the empty does go here. And the empty points or warns us that we cannot read anymore. Even though there's no protection logic inside the FIFO, you could always add that later and protect if somebody tries to read on an empty FIFO, do not honor that read or if you're full, do not honor that right and that way you can protect yourself against somebody um, trying to write to a full FIFO or trying to read from an empty FIFO. Now those are bad conditions because whatever the user was writing has now disappeared so you have to take care of that in your logic. So that's it um, guys and uh, hopefully you liked the video and if you did give me a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel. I want to bring more um, such episodes where I can show you how to write Verilog code using free tools like Icarus Verilog and GTK Wave and some more uh, tools that are available uh, for free uh, in the uh, design world. And uh, if, you, if you do want to watch those videos that will come in the future, do subscribe to my channel. And thanks again for watching today and until next time, bye bye.